number of sessions that can be transcoded. In this example, we're setting it to 2. Now, DSP farms have to use skinny. So notice we are typing the command associate application skinny client control protocol and then we are no shutting or enabling the transcoder. So we are creating a profile here with a tag of 1 specifically for transcoding. You can create multiple profiles for various functions. In a moment I'll show you how to set up profile 2 for conferencing. Now the transcoder has to register to CUCME and it has to register with a specific interface. So we are telling the DSP farm to register to this CUCME router, which is the local router, using interface FOST Ethernet 0 slash 0. Now in our example, I'm actually going to set this to a sub-interface, which is 114. So that's the interface that we're going to use to register to the CUCME router. The IP address of the router that's running CUCME is this IP address, which is actually the same local router. We need to specify an identifier for this CUCME router. So this number 1 is referenced over here. We need to specify the version of CUCME that's used on the router. If you're not sure, you can just type the command show telephony service and you can see here that we're using version 8 of Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. So we are specifying version 7.0 plus because this command notice doesn't give you an option for 8. We have to enable Skinny globally, so we've enabled that. Now this CCM group allows us to bind the DSP farm profile, in other words profile 1, to the CUCME router that we have referenced over here. So this one is referenced there, and this one is referenced over here. We're once again telling the DSP farm to use this interface when communicating with CUCME and we are telling it to use this name when communicating with the CUCME router. In a lot of Cisco documentation they specify that as a MAC address and imply that it has to be MTP and the MAC address of this interface which is not actually true it's just a unique name. In the telephony service we have to specify that name to allow the DSP farm to register. So notice we are enabling a single DSP farm, allowing for transcoding of two sessions, the same as over here, and we are allowing DSP farm with this name, MTP123, which is configured over here, to register to CUCME. So this is the name used by the farm to register to CUCME and in CUCME we are saying that the DSP farm with this name is allowed to register. So let's copy this configuration into our router and see if the DSP farm registers successfully. And let's paste that in the router. So the config has successfully been pasted onto the router. The only command that the router didn't accept is this command codec complexity flex because a codec complexity had already been configured. So if we type the command do show run pipe begin voice card, we can see that the codec complexity was set to medium already. But that's not a problem. Let's look at some show commands. So 
if we type the command show sdsp farm and let's look at the current sessions you can see at the moment there are no sessions everything is idle so let's test whether our DSP farm works for transcoding previously when we made a call from 2000 to 3000 and 3000 didn't answer the call and the call went to voicemail the call was terminated let's see what happens now so on the HQ phone 2000, I'm going to dial the branch phone 3000. We won't answer the call and it should go to voicemail. There's no mailbox associated with this extension. Goodbye. So that was a bit quick, so let's do that again. I'm going to hit redial. At the moment, the sessions are idle. There's no mailbox associated with this extension. Goodbye. Notice here that you could see that there was an active session. We've got one stream using G711 ULAW and another stream using G729. We could also configure the HQ router with another dull peer we're going to specify a destination pattern of 1999 which is the voice mail on the branch router and I'm going to specify the session target as 10.1.6.102 which is the branch router need to specify IP version 4. So let's see what happens when we dial 1999. Followed by pound. Enter your ID followed by pound. So as an example, I could put in a extension number. I did not hear your entry. Hello, Cisco Unity Express Messaging System. If you have a mailbox on this system, press star. Otherwise, hold for an operator. Notice that you can see that transcoding is taking place. In this example, G711 to G729. So stream ID 3 and 4 have been used in this example. We could also do the command show SDSP farm units and you can see here that a DSP farm has registered in skinny and it supports the transcoding of these codecs with a maximum stream of 4. When we look at our sessions notice we can see stream IDs and if you remember when there was one call two stream IDs were used. Another command we can use is show DSP farm and let's go for all. Notice here you can see that the state is active. We have configured the DSP farm for transcoding. The number of resources configured is two. Available is two. Various codecs are supported. You can see here as an example that the total number of DSP farm DSP channels is two because we configured our DSP farm to allow for two sessions or two channels and they have been configured for transcoding at the moment they're both free but if we made a call once again to 1999 do the command again notice this is in use we have one free at the moment. Followed by pound. You can see packets received, packets transmitted. Do that command again. You can see these are incrementing. I did not hear while that entry. call Hello. stays up. Cisco Unity Express so notice system. packets transmitted, packets received. System, press star. I end this call. 
Notice the DSPs are now free for other calls to be transcoded. Just to prove this some more, if I shut down the DSP farm, so DSP farm profile 1, and I shut this down, notice when we try and dial 1999, the call fails. If I no shut the DSP farm, Enter your ID Notice the call succeeds. Pound. So we can only talk from the HQ phone to Cisco Unity Express when the DSP farm is up and functioning. Can the XLite client call the HQ phone? Notice it can. We can answer the call. And the call is established. Notice as an example, on this side, the codec used is G729, whereas the XLite client is configured specifically for G711. Once again, if we do the command show DSP farm all, you can see that transcoding is taking place. Notice these values are incrementing. That concludes the first video discussing the configuration and setup of digital signal processors or DSPs. In this video we looked at how to set up a hardware transcoder allowing us to transcode or convert between codecs such as G711 and G729. In the next video I'm going to show you how to set up a hardware conference bridge using DSPs within a Cisco router. Thank you for watching.